honestly, let me just shut up for one second. You know the loudest part of this is the fact that I have the air conditioning fan speed on high. Literally, the air blowing onto my brow has more intrusive decibels than the road noise itself. That's impressive. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to the channel. Now today, as far as Wednesdays go, it is up there because we are on the French Riviera, brand new hotel called the Hotel Maybourne Riviera, which conveniently overlooks the opulent city of Monte Carlo. And speaking of opulence, the reason we're here is Rolls-Royce has uh, invited us down for more of a sort of rendezvous with the Phantom 8. So you don't really need to think of this as a, a facelift or a new car. This has sort of been fondled and fettled and enhanced just to put uh, some extra cherry on the very opulent cake. So I'm gonna give you really a top line overview of what these upgrades and changes are because really the experience for me is when you isolate yourself in the vacuum that is the triple glazed window glass house of the Phantom 8. But first of all, uh, this is something that you won't be able to see in the direct sunlight. So we're gonna splice in some sexy B-roll around about now of the new headlights, which have a starlight effect to complement the now iconic starlight headliner, which you find on the inside of the roof of the Phantom 8. Now, Rolls-Royce have taken this to the next level in that you can customize the layout and configuration of the starlight headliner to pretty much represent anything you want. So you can have the constellation of stars that just so happen to be the arrangement on the day you were born, for example. So take that idea and expand that out into your wildest dreams. But the inspiration for these came from witnessing a Phantom 8 to drive into, I don't know, a nice hotel at nighttime. Oftentimes you could see the reflection of the starlight headliner in the roof of the Phantom 8 reflect itself in this long bonnet of the car itself. Designers thought that looked cool. How can we enhance that? And they came up with effectively starlight headlights. They have 580 individual micro LED slots in each light, which I don't know if this is by design or by coincidence, but they happen to be almost the same light count as in the starlight headliner itself. So that's cool. Um, also, come and check these out. This is one of my favorite new features. These are 22 inch alloy wheels. Now I was told to do the quote tap test because these are the real deal. Listen to that. <laughs> this is not a facade. Rolls Royce tell me these are the most expensive wheels they've ever made. Now for a spot of context, this particular spec of car is 544 thousand euros sir so i'm sure a good chunk of that change is in these things but they are gorgeous now one of the sort of usps of this is of course a signature feature of a rolls royce center cap is the floating logo here so as a rolls royce wheel turns the rr stays in that position there it sort of floats to enhance that because the fascia of this is so highly polished it looks like the car is gliding you can barely tell that the wheels are turning so in terms of styling they sort of hark back to the sort of 1920s, 30s era of the explosion of aviation and art deco and just sort of nouveau opulence, which is very appropriate considering the setting we're in. Speaking of setting we're in, check out the interior of this. We are in the extended wheelbase. I mean, just the act of being able to open both of these like, I mean, just ridiculous. In terms of theater, look at that. What a sense of occasion. Now, the first world problem that I have right now is, should I sit in the front and drive or sit in the back and chill? 
Actually, just before I show you inside, one or two of the details which I skipped was this paint. This is called Olivin. Now, when it's overcast and you're not fortunate enough to find yourself in direct sunlight in the south of France, the paint can look quite black and moody, and that's cool. But if you see it in direct sunlight, it comes alive. It is this deep, rich green. It almost looks like you could put your hand into a sort of pool of green. It's gorgeous. And then complementing the interior and exterior, which we shall share with you shortly, is the hand-painted coach line. Now this in itself is cool, but what I like on Phantom 8 is where this line follows the bonnet sculpture and ends in the super fine tapered flick at the end there. It is stunning. It's the sort of thing that, I don't know, you might not appreciate from afar, but I love exploring the details which you might not see unless you get to spend some time in or outside of these cars. Speaking of which, let's head inside this car. Okay, because this is an extended wheelbase car, we thought it would only be fitting to start in the rear. Leg room is disproportionate. I mean, this, it's just endless, <laughs> vast, vast space. It's basically, I don't know really, I don't know what you would compare this with. It's, it's better than first class. It's more private, it's definitely more quiet and refined. It's just such a unique environment. Speaking of unique environment, let's just jump straight to it. Um, fridge in the back here with a bottle of Bollinger on chill. I think as well these locked in crystal glasses as well are specific to Phantom. They've got some beautiful detailing on them and it's just, I don't know, these are the things that until you hold and touch and see, it's just such a unique experience. And then down here is your more contemporary control center. You've got your control dial here for your infotainment system, which just so happens to sit on a conveniently placed screen in the back of the seats here. Um, yeah, it's just the most amazing environment to be in. So we're going to do both back and front. We have a uh, conveniently appointed chauffeur in the name of David, who's been lent to us by Rolls Royce. And we're going to go for a swan along the Riviera. Honestly, let me just shut up for one second. You know, the loudest part of this is the fact that I have the air conditioning fan speed on high. Literally, the air blowing onto my brow has more intrusive decibels than the, the road noise itself. That's impressive. <laughs> so here we go. And just straight away, talking immediately. Because we drive a lot of sports cars, supercars, quite hardcore cars on this channel, normally when I begin talking inside a car, my voice is elevated and you know, things are a little bit erratic, but in this, I almost feel like I'm disturbing the peace. <laughs> it's a funny one. Now, I just want to set a spot of context as to the ethos of Rolls-Royce. I remember when I was on the original launch of Phantom 8, and this ties in nicely with the, you know, the typical stories of us often driving supercars. On a supercar launch, they want to pat themselves on the back for how much weight they've saved what it's all about really in, in that world. In Rolls-Royce world, they pat themselves on the back for the additional 100 kilograms of sound deadening that they managed to wedge inside the car. And I remember that for me, amongst all of the incredible details, just spoke volumes about how Rolls-Royce just is an outlier in the world of luxury. They do things in their own way. I mean, this, the scale of this car, particularly the extended wheel Base car just being in it it is massive however with the new addition on phantom 8 of rear wheel steering you can go around what is effectively in a supercar a uh, first gear hairpin in effortless wafting style i mean it's such a graceful thing to be in and actually its weight and its mass somehow adds to it the way you get in it your demeanor changes. When those soft closed doors suck shut, it's kind of like putting Apple Pods in, in that it isolates you. It's like being in your own personal vacuum. It just shuts out the world. And that's not me just trying to convey, you know, kind of what it feels like. It actually feels like that. Due in part to, wait for it, triple glazing. You heard that right, triple glazing. So extra hundred, kilograms of sound deadening, quite a dense mass of a car, triple glazing, and the most resplendent air ride suspension 
you'll probably ever encounter. The way this thing irons out bumps and undulations in the road is something to behold. And that's not just the suspension itself. There is a camera system integrated in behind the rear view mirror there. And what it does, and this is no word of a lie, it literally reads the road in front of it in real time, interprets those bumps and undulations, and then talks back to the suspension to preempt and give it predefined suspension settings before you even arrive at the bump in order to iron out any nasties. I'm not making it up. You're not watching a science fiction channel. That's what this thing actually does. Reads the road and adapts the suspension in real time accordingly. How trick is that? And that is where this magic carpet ride comes from. Another quite appropriate strap line from Rolls-Royce is effortless everywhere and true to its name when you get in despite the size the mass the weight the presence of this car i can't think of another vehicle any vehicle in fact never mind something of this size that i'm so compelled to drive with two fingers i sort of i sort of pinch the wheel you, you don't grab it and here's something else which is quite hard to convey on camera is the feeling of the thickness, the diameter of the wheel rim itself. It's quite dainty, it's quite thin. Now that might sound like a small detail, but it's the thing that you interact with first and the thing that you interact with entirely when you're driving a car. Now if you get into a car which is a slightly fatter, smaller rim, which is clad in Alcantara, that immediately says something to you. It, it says what that car stands for. In this, it's thin, it's large and it's clad in very soft leather and the way you immediately interact with that is a complete game changer as to how you sit with the car. And one of the other things which is entirely unique to Rolls-Royce is the product life cycle, not just the product in itself. You see, standard procedure in the automotive industry is a sort of three-year life, which is its then its midlife a refresh. It'll get a Gen 2 facelift, three more years, maybe four, and then the new car is launched. The previous generation Phantom, the Phantom 7, had a lifespan of 14 years. <laughs> 14 years before they decided to replace it. And interestingly, when you're speaking to anyone from the team of Rolls-Royce, it's not really referred to as a car. It's a, they don't see it so much of an automotive product as they do a luxury lifestyle product. They think of it as a luxury good that just so happens to have a V12 and four wheels. And I kind of get that because it does really and truly sit in its own space just so happens to elegantly waft you along from A to B. Now the other integral part to the reason Phantom 8 drives so well is what Rolls-Royce call the architecture of luxury and there's another example as to why these guys don't necessarily see themselves as an automotive brand because everyone else would call that a chassis <laughs> but in effect their chassis or architecture of luxury is a lighter weight i think it's 30 percent lighter 30 percent stiffer versus phantom 7 and that as well in terms of hard points is the perfect bed in order to improve the ride quality and actually on a personal note i really enjoy the uh, task of conveying to you what this car feels like. If you're a regular subscriber of the channel, normally I'm telling you how visceral something is. I'm trying to conjure up opening my mental thesaurus to come up with as many synonyms as I possibly can to convey the sheer terror of a thoroughbred supercar. But in this, I'm turning the page of the thesaurus, indexing the word comfortable, opulent, resplendent and refined to come up with as many descriptive synonyms as I possibly can to convey what opulence on wheels truly feels like. And hopefully I'm doing a fairly decent job, but all in all, for me, it's just the beauty of wafting along in silent refinement. That is, that is its sort of defining feature. And I think for something to spend time in, be it in the front or the back, from travel to A to B, be chauffeured in or to be driven, I mean, you wouldn't necessarily think at first that an extended wheelbase version of a hyper luxury car would be something that's enjoyable to drive as the driver, but with the rear wheel steer, I mean, put it into low mode, that's the best equivalent that I can draw of Rolls-Royce's sport mode. Rear wheel steering, effortless torque, 
lots of reserve power from the V12. It is truly an effortless drive. But what I quite like is rather than calling that green and rather than calling that white, they've called that island moss. They don't even use the word green. You just know, don't you? When I say island moss, of course it's green. And then of course in front of us we have the now iconic gallery. And this is where clients can spec literal works of art in order to hermetically seal behind some crystal glass. And when I say literal art, you can commission your favorite artist if you want to make a uh, painting or a sculpture or some sort of abstract installation to sit on your dashboard, or you can commission Rolls-Royce themselves to uh, interpret and install many of the options that you can choose from their configurator or come up with something entirely bespoke. It's truly a special piece of equipment, this thing. All right, so this actually might just be arguably in the extended wheelbase version, the ultimate test. It's the, the experience in the back, right? I mean, as great as a place it is to do emails, one of the great things about being in the back and not driving is actually taking in and appreciating all of that quality that we've just spoken about. So first of all, Starlight Headliner, that becomes really obvious. And then all of the touch points, you actually get to spend some time interacting with all of the hardware that makes this thing feel so good, not to mention the bottle of Bollinger in the back, which we shall save for later, but also the amount of glass in this thing, the windows, I'm not sure if the camera's doing it justice, the expanse of glass in this car is massive and it lets so much light cascade inside. And then when you conveniently find yourself in an environment like this, where we're skirting the uh, coastal roads of the south of France, it's just a gorgeous environment to be in. So yeah, I can't actually decide. Do I prefer to be in the front? Do I prefer to be in the back? One thing's for sure. If you had some work to do and you wanted to sort of relax and chill in between, the amount of leg room, the reclining seats, and just that magic carpet ride irons out the whole experience. It's, yeah, and that. Oh, see you later.